Today, we are learning how to make a Minecraft server. There are a lot of inaccurate tutorials on YouTube for making a Minecraft server. I've been making Minecraft servers for years, so I can assure you this is the only tutorial you need to watch. Before we get started with the tutorial, for this server to run 24-7, your computer must always be turned on. Since we're going to be using your computer to host the Minecraft server, if you have a less powerful computer, it may lag when you're running the server and playing Minecraft at the same time. That being said, if you want to have a public Minecraft server, which is more powerful than your computer, or simply don't want to host the server yourself, I recommend Bloomhost. They are very affordable, and they use Ryzen 9 processors, which are much faster than the processors other Minecraft hosts use. Anyways, let's get on with the tutorial. To get started making your Minecraft server, we're going to have to check that we have Java 17 installed. For newer versions of Minecraft, you need to ensure you have this, otherwise the server will not work. To check, we're going to have to open command prompt. To do this, just press the start key, type cmd, and press enter. We now want to type java space hyphen version and hit enter. As you can see, I actually have Java 17 installed. However, if you don't, you're going to have to check the fourth link of the description. This will bring you to download Java 17. I also have a dedicated tutorial on how to do this, and you'll find that in the description also. The second thing you want to do is head to the second link in the description. This links to a full written tutorial detailing everything you have to do. But the main thing we want is the Minecraft server jar link. The reason why I've sent you here is because if you're watching this way into the future and something's changed, this website will be up to date. Anyways, just press Minecraft server jar link. This will straight away just redirect you to Minecraft.net's website and their current URL to download the Minecraft server. We're looking for this line right here, download minecraft underscore server dot one dot nineteen dot jar. We're just going to press this link right here to download it. Now it's downloaded, I recommend bringing this file to your desktop, just to make sure you don't lose it. I'm just going to drag that here now. From here, we're just going to hover anywhere over your desktop. Just right click, hover over new, and press folder. We can call this whatever you want. And I should note that this folder can be anywhere, but once again, I recommend just putting it in your desktop. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to call it Minecraft Server. Now drag your server.jar file inside the folder. From here, we need to open the .jar file. To do this, once again, just right click inside the folder, hover over new, and press text document. We're going to call this text document start. We now need to open the start.txt file. You can use any text editor to open this. However, I recommend Notepad, and that is what I'm going to be using in this tutorial. So I'm just going to right click the start.txt file and press open. Now we're here, we need to head back to our web browser. We're looking for this line right here. This is what we're going to put in the text document. So just hover over it, right click, copy. And once we're back in the text document, we can simply paste it by right clicking and pressing paste. It's very important you understand what everything in this text document means. What this is saying is, the server is going to start with Java. It's going to use a maximum amount of one gigabyte of RAM. It's going to start with one gigabyte of RAM, and it's going to use the jar file minecraft underscore server dot one dot nineteen dot jar. However, you may notice that inside our Minecraft server folder, we do not have a minecraft underscore server one dot nineteen jar. We only have a server dot jar. So we have to go into our notepad, and we need to manually change this to just server dot jar to match what is in our folder. Once we've done this, we just need to go to file. Press save as, and now we need to go to save as type, press text documents and change this to all files. We now want to make sure that it isn't start.txt, rather it is start.bat. We can press save now. Once we've closed the text file, you can see we have three new files. A server.jar, a start.bat, and a start.txt. We can now delete the start.txt file. For you it might just say server and it might just say start and it won't have the little endings. To change this, all you have to do is press view and we need to check this little box here, file name extensions. So make sure that's checked and then you will be able to see the file extensions. Now we have done this, we need to open the start.bat file. Once this is complete, it's going to create a few more files. However, there are still more steps we have to do before our Minecraft server is complete. Firstly, we need to open the end user license agreement text document. Just double click to open it once again. As you can see, we now need to change the end user license agreement to true. By doing this, we are indicating that we agree to the end user license agreement. 
You can read this right here. Since I agree, I have changed it to true. Me and I just have to go to file and press save and X off the text document. Once we've done this, we can open the start.bat file once again. This might take a while, so I'm going to cut to when it's done. Now the server's running, we need to stop it as there's a few more things we have to modify to make sure the server is running how you'd like it. So just type stop and hit enter. From here, we want to head to the server.properties file. This file essentially keeps all of the settings of your server, so just right click and press open. Once again, I recommend using Notepad for this, however you could use any text editor you like. As you can see, there's lots of different options we can pick, however there's a few I'd like to point out that I think you might find useful. The first one is whitelist. If you don't want other people joining your server, I recommend setting this to true. This could potentially prevent griefers from joining your server. Since I know I'm going to be the only person joining this server, I'm going to just set this for false for now. The second thing I want to point out is the difficulty of the server. This is what's going to be the default difficulty when you join the server, assuming you don't change it with commands. So right now it's easy, however I'm going to change it to peaceful. Although there might be a lot of things you want to change in here, the main thing I want to point out to you is the server port. If you decide to port forward the server using my tutorial, you'll have to keep note of this number. However, I will go over that later in more depth. Once you're done modifying the server.properties file to your liking, just press file and save. Before we start the server again, I just want to point out this folder here. This is where your world is going to be stored. If you want to make your single player world a multiplayer world, all you have to do is go into the saves folder of your .minecraft folder and place the world you want to be multiplayer into this folder. You will then delete this folder and rename your actual world to world. That means your server will know what world to access. Now I've cleared that up, you just want to open the start.bat file. Now the server is running, I'm going to walk through how to actually connect to the server. Now we're in the multiplayer section of Minecraft, we just want to add the server. If you want to join the server on the computer that's hosting the server, all you have to do is put the number 0. And once you hit done, as you can see the server is running fine. However, if you want to join the server on a different computer on your home network, you're going to have to get the IPv4 address. To get your IPv4 address, you need to go on the computer that's hosting your server and open command prompt. So once you're on the computer, all you have to do is hit the start key and type cmd and hit enter. From here, all we have to type is ipconfig and once again hit enter. This might seem a little daunting at first, but don't worry, it's very simple. All we're looking for is the IPv4 address right here. In my case, it's 192.168.1.139. So all we have to do is highlight this and copy it by pressing Ctrl C and send that to people on your home network. Once you're back on the multiplayer section, all you have to do is press add server and put in your IPv4 address and hit done. As you can see, once again, it's working perfectly. However, what happens if you want a friend to join your server who isn't connected to your home network? Well, in that case, you're going to have to port forward. I have a very clear video on how to port forward. The link to that will be at the end of the video or in the third link of the description. So make sure to go check that after I finish this tutorial. Now we've connected to your Minecraft server, there's a couple things we have to do to make sure that you can control it properly. So you can use commands on your server, you're going to want to make yourself an operator. To do this, you'll have to go back into your server console. All you have to do to make yourself an operator is type op space followed by your username. So my username is kingkicks and once you've done that, hit enter. Now you can operate any command in Minecraft. I hope you find this tutorial useful. On the left hand side of your screen right now, I have a link to the port forwarding tutorial. If you want friends on different networks to join, I recommend pressing that now. If this video was helpful at making your Minecraft server, please like and subscribe. And if you had any questions, just put them down below in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video.